Hey guys, Double Orange 927 here. Here today, guys, I am going to discuss Halo 5 Guardians again. Another discussion video, and this time I'm more in the inclined to discuss the story this time around. I think there are many things the story got right, but also many things it got wrong, and ugh, a lot wrong, should I say. But, you know, I'm going to go through the story by the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, let's get started. Okay, so I guess we'll start with the good. Uh, because honestly, the good is probably going to be the shortest part I can get out of the way. So, the okay. Now, this is the story we actually got. These are goods with the story we actually got. This isn't necessarily mean these goods should have, like, they're just compromises for the bad. It's like, I still would have preferred a different type of story, the story. A story that I'll explain in the end of the video how I would have done it. But, um... So here's the goods. What the story we got. Okay, not necessarily the story. Like, So it has nothing to do with the marketing campaign or any of that. It's just the story we have. First things first. One thing I do like is, in a way, I'm a big fan... Okay, first off, I just gotta get back to that out of the back. I love that this game has the Covenant Civil War. I love it. I love it a lot. It, I love it a lot because what it's nice about it is that it really kind of shows what, like in particular with the Arbiter, it shows what's been going on with them after Halo 3. You know, it was like the context is, is that, you know, what's going on with the Covenant after Halo 3, how they really working out and i get halo 4 came out and they still existed and stuff and you know but there wasn't much of an explanation it was like you know chief it's like i thought we made a truce with the covenant and Cortana just says a lot can happen in four years which i get why it says that because that was under chiefs and cortana's perspective they didn't know either but halo 4 never got that context of what was actually going on till a little bit in Sparn Ops. And that was kind of the big thing there. Um, next thing is, is that I'm really like, and to back things up with the St. Helios concept, it's just with the Arbiter. You know, it's kind of cool to see the Arbiter back. And now there is something about the Arbiter that will, I'll discuss in the bad, but I'm just saying it's cool that he's back. It's nice that it's kind of really showing off the war and all that. And it's overall, like, I believe you could make a full Halo game on St. Helios. That's how much I love it. I really think you could almost make, like, a complete Halo game just about the Covenant Civil War. Which they should. They should make a Halo game like that. That takes place in between Halo 3 and Halo 4 with this Covenant Civil War. And you could play as an Elite or something. That'd be nice. Kind of be a breath of fresh air. So, 343, if you're listening, please do that. Um, next good thing I like about this is that it is very... It is a good scale-based game. It's like, it starts out at first very... Kind of just in general, calm, very... Just regular, but as the game goes on the game becomes a bigger and bigger scale where it's conflict. It's a lot more, more conflicts are happening, more um, stuff is going on, because you go from, like, I forgot to mention this will have spoilers, just FYI. Um, it has, like, you know, you from going to a snow planet, to a space station, to, you know, just all these cool stuff, and the scale always gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and the next thing I like, which I kind of was sort of talking about, I, this is why I was going to say, my first, um, varied environments. It's like, okay, the levels themselves, I do admit, have some work to be done and get repetitive. That's kind of one of my negatives, but I'm, I'm solely talking about what gets right with the story and I like about how the story puts you into so many locations. It's like you have 
so many places you can visit. So, like, as the character. So it's like you get to explore these places for the war in, in areas you never could before. And it's really kind of nice to see that. You know, from a human colony to St. Helios to, you know, more generically another Forerunner planet. But it's still nice. And, you know, another positive I do enjoy is the contrast of Locke and Chief. It's like, okay, like I said, I have much to discuss about this in the negatives. But, like I said, I'm talking about the game we have and not so much the game I wanted or we should have gotten. Um, now, Locke's and Chief's contrast very much is a lot different than the advertisements. Like, how it works is essentially Chief leaves due to the fact that he got a contact from Cortana. Cortana is like saying all this stuff. She's like, okay, I need to go get her. So Chief is doing that. Infinity orders him, no, 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 no. Chief, don't, don't do this. Just come home. Don't do this because we have another team and stuff. You're, and they did do this because, um... Because they don't believe Chief is emotionally capable to deal with this. It's like, overall, um, Chief is not emotionally stable. So, the, he, like, they order him just to come back to Infinity, but he disobeys. And it's like, wait, Chief never, never consciously disobeyed orders. Okay. Not under that kind of note. Okay, so that's the thing. It, that's the thing that's kind of cool about this, which even the, I call it quote-unquote, the original story, the story that was advertised, kind of lacked. It's like, we kind of led to, we were led to believe Chief left in the original story because he was trying to figure out who woke up the guns. It was a very duty-like thing. On like, it was kind of like the Halo 4 disobey orders. It's like, he, in Halo 4, he did disobey orders, but it was solely out of duty. He didn't, to, you know, stop the didact. It's not like he did it on a personal note. And that's the thing, Halo 5, he personally disobeyed orders. He wasn't disobeying it for a greater cause. He was doing it because he was like, hey... The closest thing I've ever had to, like, I'd say, like, a friend is contacting me for her to get her. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to let some other person do it who doesn't know what it's like. And so he leaves and goes AWOL, and then Locke is sent to hunt, uh, like, get Chief. But it's, like, the contrast that's nice is that she, Locke isn't so much insanely antagonistic. To chief. In fact, because that's what made a lot of people hate him in the ads. Personally, I actually kind of liked him for that. But the thing was is that chief, like Locke actually was respectful for chief. He was like calling him sir. He was, he was addressing chief as a superior. And he was, Locke was following orders. He wasn't, tr he had nothing personal with the chief. Which was kind of nice. It was just like. You know, they just needed someone to get bring him back, and Locke volunteered. And, you know, that's the thing. It's just Locke is fulfilling his duty, and it's really the obligation that's nice between their contrasts. It's the obligation between following orders and obligation to following your personal desires. That's the thing. Locke is following orders, while Chief is following his personal desire, what he wants. And what he wants is to bring Cortana home. And that's the thing that's really nice about it. It's very it's very diverse. And, and Locke eventually comes to understand why Chief is wanting this. That's why, like, at the end of the game, spoiler alert, he's like, Chief, wait, you don't have to do this alone. Locke is going on his own as well. So that's a thing. Uh, excuse the ad, by the way. Um, that's kind of the big thing. It's just they are in this contrast to 
how to explain this. Blah. But basically, they have a respect and they have different idols. And these idols just affect that. So, you know, that's another thing I really like about it. And the third and probably the final thing that I really like about this is... And this is going to be controversial because I know many people don't like this. Would this have been the thing I would have personally taken? Maybe, maybe not. But I'll discuss. Cortana. Now, heavy spoiler. Cortana is the main villain. Um, basically, Cortana has this idea of using the Guardians to police the world. Now, I originally hated this idea. I was like, no, that's stupid, that's so generic, it's gosh dang Terminator and Halo. But when I carefully thought of it, and especially when I rewatched the cutscene where Cortana explains her desire to do this, there's something that really puts an analogy to what makes it kind of good. Uh... When Cortana is explaining, I'm doing this for people to make them more and all this. And Chief says, like Dr. Halsey did to me. And that's the thing. It's like Cortana is reflecting upon what her, cre her creator did. She's self-consciously doing what Halsey did. Because think of it. What did Halsey do? She made the Spartans. The Spartans were these ultimate war machines that could and she used them to police the um the colonies because that was the thing the spartans weren't made to fight the covenant now eventually they continued to fight the covenant but that's not their original purpose their original purpose was to police the galaxy from insurrectionists to put down traitors and Halsey built, made the Spartans with that intention, which is kind of the thing that makes it really interesting. She made the Spartans with that intention, and Cortana is kind of doing the same thing with, you know, she's awakening these Guardians to use as weapons, aka, like, like the Spartans, to police the galaxy, to... To restore order and everlasting peace. That is the central goal. And Halsey had the exact same goal. Now, and that's what, that's something I really found really cool when I thought of it carefully. Now, I do wish it was better executed to make us kind of think that process. But it's like, that is the cool concept about it. It's like, you... She's reflecting what her creator did. And and what's even more funny is the fact that she is in denial of this. She's like, no, that monster forced you. This is a gift. And Chief is saying, listen to yourself. Meaning, Chief probably knew this. He knew it was BS. And that's the thing. So those are the things I like about this story. Now, let's move on to the things I don't like. Okay, <sighs> prepare yourselves for an incoming rant. Now, this starts all the way. The first level of the game, they kill Juam Dama. WTF. WTF. What? You killed off Juam Dama. One of the coolest base characters ever created into... The Halo universe. Who had so much background. He built his covenant from the ground up. He was atheist. He had so much. He was, he was like the opposite of what a normal elite was. Which is what made him so cool. And all, he, they built him to be such a cool character in Spartan Ops and in the comics. And then it all just leads to him to be killed in the first 15 minutes of the dang... Um, of the dang game. It's like, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, like, Star Wars, the prequel trilogy, because it's like Count Dooku, for example. Count Dooku was built in Attack of the Clones to be this 
pretty interesting and cool villain, only for him to be killed off in like the first few minutes of Revenge of the Sith. It's like, what? How does this, what? That, that just doesn't make sense. And the same applies with Juam Dama. That's really how Juam Dama is. It kind of applies the exact same way, which is almost funny, but not in a good way. Next thing, it's just the story was not what was advertised. Okay, if you came into this expecting this conflict between Chief and Locke, this big conflict of, oh my goodness, Chief is a traitor and all this, like, and about Oni's lies and all this, which was what I loved. That's the only reason I played Hunt the, uh, listened to Hunt the Truth, because I thought it had relevance to Halo 5, but it doesn't. It has no relevance. And you don't even need to listen to Hunt the Truth to, uh, to get, you don't, like, Hunt the Truth has nothing to do with Halo 5. Nothing. Okay? And it's funny because there's so much awkward dialogue that makes them think they're doing that story. Like, like for example, like the Arbiter in one scene when Locke talks to the Arbiter, he's like, Oni, out of the shadows, the spies announce themselves now, Agent Locke. It's like, they, they still act like the Oni are like the bad guys here when they're not. They don't even have a role in the game. Okay, and what makes matters even more funny is just like the the central idea is that you know basically in this game, Chief, like I said, he does leave. I would say he went in a way AWOL, but not nowhere near. He was never presumed a traitor. He was never, you know, Locke never had this distinct contrast to Chief. In fact, they really felt like the same freaking character. That's how similar they were. It's like, sometimes, aside from the look and the voice, if I listen to both of their dialogue from the same voice actor and stuff, and all this, I think they would be the exact same character. That's how similar I find them. Which is so, it's just so stupid in my view. They had so much opportunity to differ Locke. And it's like, I would, I would be fine with Locke just being this dude following orders if it wasn't for the fact Chief is the exact same guy except maybe he disobeys the orders. But aside from that, he's a clumsy one-liner who's just this regular soldier who doesn't say much or show zero emotion. And Locke applies the exact same way. I don't even know if I've ever seen a time where Locke went angry. Where he went so mad. He's like... Because that's the thing. I was thinking that mentality. And another thing that I have to back up is the Arbiter. Don't get me wrong. I love the Arbiter. He's an awesome character. He always will be. But he has so little of a role in this game. It's like I was thinking ever since I watched those Halo 2 anniversary cutscenes, which I'll get to in a minute, literally the Arbiter has like almost zero role in the freaking game. Like, it'd be cool having more missions on St. Elios and having this cool narrative thought. In fact, if they kept Juam Dama alive, they could have had something where the Arbiter and Juam Dama had a fight with each other. Like, an actual sword fight. And Jewel and Damas explain to the Arbiter everything about his hatred to humanity and stuff. And all this. And the Arbiter would be in his defense contrast. It'd be nice. Okay? And none of it is there. None of it makes any darn sense. It, like, it's so much wasted story opportunities that could have been used. And what makes matters even more like just stupid is that the ugh, what what was i gonna say it's like arbiter should have been a more major role and not only that but you know how i brought up that halo 2 anniversary thing it makes zero sense in the final product it's like there is no area where that cutscene from halo 2 anniversary the one that was connected to halo 5 there is no area where that could fit None. 
So much for 343 self being so respectful to their canon material. Like I said, that's already messed up when they killed off Duo Dama. But even worse, all this? And what leads me to my final flaw with the game story, the final flaw, like I could nitpick minor things, which I might do sometime, just, I don't know, maybe I'll do a podcast with some friends of mine and just kind of nitpick, but I'm going through the big things. It's like, like I said before, I have no problem with Cortana being the villain. I have no problem with that. But it, I want that only if they're going to make her big, a bigger deal. Because Cortana, no offense, it was just like there was no explanations of why she was thinking this way aside why I had the theory about she was built off this based off Halsey's mindset. But that's just a theory. There's no physical explanation. And what makes matters worse is that Cortana is a great character as always, but the Warden Eternal who is supposed to be the main villain of the freaking game by terms of villain you see the most, he has, like, zero persona. He has very, like, all he does in the whole game is just go like, oh, he's, he's like, telling, asking Chief, like, why, why did you come here for Kotani? And Chief says, like, I'm going to bring her home. And Warden's like, nope, that ain't happening. You know, I'm Cortana's guardian angel. I'm like, no, that doesn't... The Warden had the potential to be so much more. Now, I have no problem with him having this guardian-based thing with Cortana, but it should have worked in a more refound way. Like, what would be cool is kind of like the Lord of the Rings where Cortana is being... was built by the Warden, like, rebuilt. And... Like, the Warden's kind of manipulating her with his own ideals, with his own programmings. So it's like torturing the Cortana that already exists and making her think differently. And eventually, like, John snaps her out of it in, like, the next Halo game and all this cool stuff. But it's like none of it is there. So, yeah, just Cortana literally has, like, so little of a role in the game. So... Now I'll discuss uh, what I probably would have done if I wrote the Halo 5 story. What I probably would have done... Okay, if I was the head writer of Halo 5, I would have started out... Now, okay, this would be a long campaign. I want it like 15 hours. I, I'm sorry. If, like I said, the length of this campaign is so short. But that's a video for another day. Um... It's like, how, how I would have started it is introducing, like, having a prologue explaining all the members of Fireteam Osiris, explaining Chiefs reunite, uh, uniting with Blue Team, and just kind of a prologue based on that. Um, and after that, I'd, um, what I do is, now largely the first two levels would play very similar how they did. Now, there's two things I'd change, though. One, when they come to rescue Halsey, um, Julem Dama escapes instead of being killed. Secondly, when Halsey reunites with Infinity, they have a personal conversation between her and Palmer and all that because they don't have that in the game. So I do that. Uh, then after that, um... The blue team mission, I had the idea, would take place a month before um, the events of the current game. So that way it'd be like kind of interesting to see just um, them, like, you know, just to see that they've been gone quite a while. So then after that, Warden Eternal uh, Chief is at one of the colonies. Probably uh, I'll do that's colony from the trailers and the warden is giving him sort of these messages and stuff and well not messages but he's telling him these things that only chief should know and then like after that um chief leaves because he's just so curious it's like he knows something is up and he's suspecting the Warden's awakening these Guardians. So he's like, he leaves to try to figure this out. And he doesn't even return to Infinity to try to 
figure this out. He's just like, nope, I'm leaving. I need to figure this out. I need to figure out why Warden is saying all this stuff. And I'd have the idea where... So then... Chief kind of follows the Guardian attacks. Like, him and Blue Team leave. They take that Prowler thing from the Blue Team mission, and they travel across the galaxy to multiple planets, one of which is Meridian. And that's when, because Osiris is deployed to Meridian uh, for a different purpose. I wouldn't say it would be to get Blue Team. I'd say it'd be to um, stop a Guardian awakening there because there was some warning by Halsey, she figured out that a Guardian would wake up on Meridian. So they go there to Meridian to figure out, hey, what's going on? And then what John is there and Blue Team. And Osiris is like, wait, what the crap? So Osiris is trying to like bring Blue Team in. And, you know, they have their little sparring match. <laughs> That's why I call it just their fight. Um, and then after that, after that point, um, after the minute, Ch instead of going through a portal, I'd have it where Chief, um, went into the, um, slip, like, not the slip space portal, but he went through a door into the Guardian to head back to his Prowler, because he figured out more clues and stuff when it looks like from Locke's perspective, he's heading to the control room. So it's like, once when the Guardian wakes up and causes all this destruction, Agent Locke is like, he's like, wait a second, this doesn't make sense. And I have it to, because, you know, the idea was as, as Locke, you're kind of meant to study Chief and stuff. So he looks through Chief's, um, he looks through all the Guardian attacks and he sees something of how... He notices in the recording files how every Guardian attack, Chief is there. He's, like, he's there. He, he's there, and Locke is suspecting, and then the Infinity look at this, and they're like, oh, and especially Oni, they're like, wait, Chief is waking up these Guardians. He's sided with the Forerunners. He's trying to cause all this destruction, and I'd have the idea where Locke, um, lost someone he cared about there, or at least, um, out, maybe just out of duty, maybe not even losing someone he cares about, but rather the duty, he's like, he's just like, wait, he's a traitor, he, he turned against everything, and Locke hates Chief because of that, but he respects him at the same time, it's like, he respects the man he once was, but not the man he is now. Kind of like how it worked in um the trailer when he's like, let us remember him as our protector and not the one who gave us this. As our savior and not our destroyer. Let us remember him forever as you and not as you. And I'd have that contrast where Locke hates Chief because of this. So now Locke is going across to hunt him down. He's visiting multiple colonies he's going back to meridian even after the guardian left because there's still like prometheans there and he's trying to figure out why chief like why the guardians are waking up why well not why the guardians are waking up but he's trying to figure out where chief is going and where the next guardian is so then they discover eventually that there's a guardian on saint helios so Locke suspects the Chief is going to be there. And he exclusively asks the Arbiter to help him find Chief. If knowing, telling him that he, that he is causing this destruction and I have to stop him. And the Arbiter kind of represents this middle conflict. Because he's like, he doesn't believe that Chief is a traitor. Because the Arbiter knows Chief. He's saying, so he's talking to Locke about Chief's backstory upon you know, how he met the chief and all that, and how he eventually became friends, and Locke is then someone conflicted upon, is chief actually a traitor? He's questioning questioning himself, but he's still saying, no, he is a traitor. He is this evil person. We have to stop him, and Oni is whispering these I, 
these lies into Locke, saying he's he's a traitor, Locke. You have to stop him. You need to save humanity. And while all this is happening in Locke's part, Chief is going to St. Neely's to do... He's trying to figure out who woke... That he's trying to figure out what the warden wants. So Chief goes to St. Helios. Um, and I'd had the idea where Bal Sunion happens. In the first part of Bal Sunion, you play as Locke. But then the second half, you play as Chief. And then the third part, you go back to Locke. And Locke catches up to Chief. And he's like, and he's trying to bring Chief down. He wants to. He's almost willing to kill him. And during all this, Chief is fighting to defend himself. And I'd have it where during the middle of the fight, the Warden Eternal comes in. And he literally, in a way, saves Chief's life. But for an alternative goal. It's not like he's doing it to be kind. He's the Warden. But then Chief, he, he fails to escape the Guardian. From his prowler. So he goes through the portal with the guardian. With with Locke going through as well. They get separated. Chief is a step ahead of Locke. And they are now on the move. Chief moves on Genesis. In order to figure out what is happening. He engages multiple Promethean forces. That are defending the planet. And then encounter the warden. Finding him hostile the first time, he engages him in full force. But then, after defeating him once, Chief encounters him again, this time with the Warden unarmed. He realizes the Warden isn't here to fight, but to talk. And during all this, the Warden tells about all these things that he knows about Chief. About his forgotten name, who he was. And more importantly, the background of Blue Team and everything. And Chief is curious in his mind. And he's asking, how do you know this? And he's saying, there are many. And I don't know, there will be a cool quote. I don't know a cool quote from Cortana. I, I, it'd be cool if he says, I'm a thief and I keep what I steal. Or something cool like that. And something Cortana said from Halo 3. And Chief is like, he's like, thinking his mind and then he's like where's cortana and then that's when the warden just disappears and after all this lock he continues onward lock also being on genesis is unaware of where he is he is hunting down chief and eventually when he comes across chief they have a third final engagement with their guns pointed fire team osiris is fighting blue team each team member fighting one or another. And then a, and then when the warden interflects with his Promethean forces, everything comes to fruition. And after all this, then everything's completed to where when the warden is fighting Fire Team Osiris and Blue Team, where they are forced to temporarily team up to stop the warden and his forces, with the warden saying, you will not explain Going like the mantle of responsibility for all this belongs to me, to belongs to us. And the confusion to the player, because no one would say anything here, is, um, what does he mean, us? And during this thing, I'd also have it before the warden intervenes, there's a boss battle where you have to play as Osiris and fight Blue Team. The emotion of having to fight your favorite hero. And then when the warden interferes, you then switch to blue team in order to take down the warden. And once when all this happens, all this conflict, all this chaos, eventually the words come out, enough. And then Cortana intervenes. Chief is so shocked. He's so emotionally unstable. He's, he's like, how are you alive? How are you here? And Cortana explains all this. And while this is happening, Locke is gained the hateful. Mo She's explaining about the Guardian's purpose and all that. And then Locke is thinking, wait a second. She's waking up the Guardians. He grows immediately defensive, going as if saying, we have to stop this. And then Cortana separates them. 
and at and then in a long cutscene, Cortana explains what the warden about the purpose. Chief doesn't know what to do, and before he can think a move, he is immediately stunned and put into the cryptum with no idea of what to do. During all this, Locke and Osiris intervene, and really the last level would play as it did, except the warden would be the final boss in the game and a very upgraded warden, very big, very powerful. And once when that happens, then essentially um, everything would play as it did. And what I'd have at the end of the game is when Cortana's unleashing all this chaos, the elites are in hiding. Everyone's in hiding, our heroes and stuff, kind of like how the main game did. And um, when they're in hiding, Cortana is, um, the guardians are being like taking control of everything. You see these glimpses, like the beginning of Halo 6 shows the darkness of what happened to where... I had this idea where every species has these colors on them that show how faithful they are to the mantle's rule. And with all that, they're in hiding. The Arbiter is there. They have to use outdated technology and all this stuff. And Chief has a cracked visor. And then at the very end of the game, the very final cutscene, they're discussing what they're going to do. And Chief... And as they discuss a plan, they're like, wait, where's Chief? And Chief leaves in the distance with his cloak. And that's like, where's Chief? And there's another scene in the future because it's on St. Helios. Chief is in the desert and he sees one of the guardians arrive on St. Helios. He stands in front of its orbit. He knows it's there and he knows Cortana is operating it. And he makes his stand to which the next Halo will come. And that's how overall I would construct the story. So, you know, more details aside, I'd probably like, you know, make more of a character development between um, Palmer and Halsey to settle their hatred for each other rather than ignoring it. I'd also make it big of Vale's knowledge of St. Haley's about each of the characters' backstory and what I'd like to do mission wise, it I almost for a blue team, uh, they kind of like I said, the prologue explains how they reunited and stuff and who they are. And um during all this, you know, after all this ends, it's like that's how I do it. It's just it it would be a game that would feel longer, that would feel more intentful, more personal. And I really feel like this, that would have been the story that most fans would have wanted. So, yeah, guys, tell me what you think about this, about my comp my positives and negatives with the story we got. And tell me what you think about the story that I suggested that they should have done. So, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like this video up, subscribe, and, you know, if you like... You know, if you like my stuff, hate my stuff, you want to talk about my stuff, just, you know, like, dislike, or post in the comments below, and please also subscribe. Thanks for watching this vid, guys, and until then, I'll see you next time. Peace.